Over the past year, I started buying custom LEGO figures and have made over 40 videos reviewing these custom products from over 10 different companies. As someone who went in blind to this community, I intended to help others figure out where to buy from. After checking out a variety of companies, I think I'm finally ready to start this series. In this video, I'll briefly go over some basic topics and go into more details in future episodes. So, like the title says, where do you begin when first buying custom LEGO? The first step to collecting is to figure out what your budget is going to be. This will help you decide who you can buy from and how much you can end up getting. Controlling your budget is going to end up saving you a lot of stress and keep the hobby very healthy for you. Just looking at some prices from different companies, custom figures usually cost more than some LEGO sets and it can be a hard pill to swallow at first. After you decide how much you're willing to spend, this will help you go into the next step. The first rabbit hole that you're going to need to go through and explore is deciding what themes you want to end up collecting. These can include existing LEGO themes like Star Wars or superheroes, or it can go out of what LEGO makes themselves into other pop culture characters. This is where the gamble begins due to the ongoing LEGO sets that are always coming out with new figures in them. So that's why I try to buy more figures of properties that LEGO would probably never touch. That way I don't end up spending too much money on a figure and then LEGO makes a cheaper version on their own. Again, setting your own boundaries at the beginning of the collecting process is going to save you a lot of trouble later on. So you've set your budget, you decided what characters you need in your collection, the next thing you're going to have to do is join the great custom LEGO debate of pad printing versus UV printing. Pad printing is going to be the same process that LEGO uses for their prints, and it ends up being a bit more involved. For pad printing, each color requires its own plate, and it makes it a very lengthy process because of this, and often leads to it being more expensive. Pad printed figures tend to have a limited amount of colors just because of this, and a lot of printers will only use four colors at the most. I personally enjoy collecting these pad printed figures because these limitations lead to designers simplifying their characters, and these prints end up being a lot closer to the style of LEGO because of that. Of course, this does go right out the window for figures made by higher end companies overseas, kind of like Phoenix Customs or Jocka Bricks. They are able to print more on their figures, but of course that just means they'll be more expensive. With UV on the other hand, from what I've seen, designers can use a lot more colors on one plate. And because of this, designers end up kind of developing their own style that's unique to them. Of course, this can often lead to prints looking less like official parts. UV figures can often be less expensive than pad printed figures. And a lot more companies do end up using this method because it's easier to get into. There are some pretty decent designers that do UV figures, but due to the large quantity of people using this method, the quality can really vary all over the place. Even if you want to get pad printed figures, for some of the more obscure characters, going with UV might be your only option for getting them. So with a different type of printing out of the way, now it comes down to the designers on the market. The best way to explore your options is to check out Instagram, I would say. A good first step is to look at some of the bigger custom minifigure photography accounts. It might end up being a bit overwhelming at first just because there is such a wide variety of options and different styles available but this just comes down to your budget, and I would personally start out just trying out one or two items at a time for your first purchase. For me, when I'm trying out a new company, I'll try and buy a figure and maybe some of their other accessory prints just to get decent variety of items. With that too, it'll make the shipping kind of balance out as well. When you're looking at some of the higher end customs though, usually you'll only be able to buy one figure at a time anyway, so the shipping is kind of a wash. And for those types of figures, those designers don't usually sell their figures on their own and utilize resellers. With that being said, it is important to understand where the different figures come from and the variety of marketplaces where you can purchase items from as well. For a lot of bigger brands like Citizen Brick, they'll have their own store where you can buy from and it is made by them in-house. Because of that, they can be pretty fast for shipping their products out and they don't end up usually having pre-orders, but on the rare occasion it could happen. Like I said, for the higher end products, you'll end up having to buy from a reseller that's usually in Asia or some other country. With those types of stores though, it will make the process a bit more complicated just because they don't always make those figures. You have to wait for the factory somewhere else to ship them to them, and then they will ship them out all across the world. To gauge the value of a purchase, I would pay attention to the amount of details in the printing or any custom molded accessories that might be included. One of the areas that custom printers definitely excel at compared to LEGO is leg printing and arm printing. I will also say that they create some great parts to complement their figures, but some also detract from the LEGO aesthetic. 
This is where I'll definitely say it comes down to personal taste and what your budget is. Sometimes it might be a little bit better to get the cheaper version of a character to save money. Other times it might be better just to go ahead and buy the more expensive version so you don't need to get another one if it gets improved in the future. If you want to get more information on the behind the scenes of making custom figures, the Big Bad Fig podcast did an episode with Phoenix Customs and it gave a lot more of an inside look into the process of making custom minifigures. With these higher end customs, it's also very important to understand that when you're buying from these foreign marketplaces, almost always they're going to be pre-orders, so you're going to have to wait a while to get your purchases, sometimes even several months. After everything we've already been through, the last step I would say is to explore the aftermarket and buy any previously released figures or parts that you might have missed and want. It ends up being a lot easier to get the new products as they're coming out. You get them for cheaper usually, but of course you miss out on some really cool figures in the past and you really feel like you need them for your collection. There are some options. The biggest marketplace for this sort of thing would be eBay. But of course, prices on that website are going to be pretty wild, so definitely make sure to check out the sold items and find an average of what an item might be worth. Another really helpful service is the Geek Exchange by Geek Over 40 on Instagram, which is a very cool monthly marketplace for sales or trading. For this, you'll need to make a collage of things that you want to buy, and if somebody has it for sale, they'll message you and you guys can kind of figure out your deal. Otherwise, some people might be looking for trades, which would be a little bit more involved. I've personally gotten multiple items from this process and I would highly recommend it to anybody looking for specific items. And now that we're at the end of the video, I know this has been a pretty surface level amount of information, but I hope it's been helpful and gives new collectors a better perspective on what you might need to know. Collecting custom figures can be a very fun process, but there's also that competition aspect that can make it kind of tough. I would recommend dipping a toe in before taking a full dive, just so you know you're going to like what you're going to be collecting. If there's anything else you want to know about custom LEGO and buying, definitely leave a comment below and it might be featured in a follow-up video, or I'll give a quick response just to help you out. For more custom LEGO videos and reviews, check out my channel. I've been Brick Radiop, and I'll see you in the next video.